Let's do some Poke World stuff, huh? Mm-hmm, um, totally. Cool. What kind of uh, demographic do you want to go for? Are we are we aiming for all ages here? Are we gonna have like a, a kitty park and then like stuff for the grown ups to do, or is it gonna be something more specific? Well, so I think the the magic of Pokemon, and, and as it's pretty much at this point scientifically proven, mm-hmm. uh, that it really does kind of cra- you know, cross that age mm-hmm. barrier. Yeah, where you can have something designed for everyone. But not pander to a specific demographic. Absolutely. So you can you can make and even like the Pokemon games are a perfect example of that too, um, where it can be as shallow as you want it to be, but it can also be as deep as you want it to be, and you can you know min max and grind right. Jesus out of it. Yeah, it's it's um, one of those like easy to learn but hard to master things. Like if you're yeah, if you're and, a four year old, you, you can still play it. Oh, totally, and you don't have to master it at all. I mean, it, it, that's only it's there if you want it to. Um, but otherwise, if you just want to play through the story, it's fine. And I think having a theme park based around that, would, it, it totally falls in the same concept. Where So basically, this is what I would imagine the, the core of it being, is that you Pokemon is so diverse. And then you have all these different, you know, throughout your, when you're going throughout the game, you have, you know, the, the, the little towns. And each town is kind of a different vibe to it. And then you have, like, the coastal cities. And then you have more deserty ones and then you have the caves so that you could just literally replicate that inside of a theme park yeah and have all these different little vibes that way it's constantly being broken up and uh you know you don't have to have a massive amount of land to do it mm-hmm. you just need to clearly you know delineate which which one is which essentially yeah that could be cool if you like if you set it up like the the world map kind of thing so there's little routes, you yeah, know, to go, yeah. you know, the pathways in between the attractions are those are like the routes and uh, maybe inside of each building, there can be different things going on inside. Like you go into the Pokemon gym and there could be something going on inside there instead of just being a Pokemon gym. Like maybe there's a roller coaster inside or some kind of, yeah, yeah. exactly. That could be yeah, a cool concept. Sure. Um, yeah. And I mean, then you have, it, so you just take the core concepts of what makes Pokemon what it is. Mm-hmm. So like, what do you do in Pokemon? You... You meet a couple of different people, or I guess a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. You uh, catch Pokemon. You make those Pokemon fight each other, which is to this day so a little confusing. To yeah, me. and, and when, especially when people use the word "make," like we make them fight. Yeah. That's like, oh, that yeah. sounds really unethical now. <laughs> that's their purpose. It's like hey, that's yeah, even worse. Right. Yeah, whatever, man. That's like saying a slave's purpose is to work. Like it's like, yeah, yeah, I mean, sure, but there shouldn't be slaves in the first place. Shame Michael Vick, but we don't shame each other for mm. making Pokemon. Fight. They are fictional, uh, though. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, as a kid, I was always really excited about like a world where Pokemon are real or something. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, and now I'm like, I'm, you know, I, I'm cool with it being fictional because I don't know if, how I'd feel about like, yeah, making my little Pikachu die. I think if if they were in the real world, I think I think we wouldn't make them fight as much. I think we'd use them for more productive purposes. Like, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we might still use them as machinery, like as manual labor or to help us do things. But like, imagine yeah. if dogs were like, you know, six feet tall, we would probably use them for significantly more. Like, if everyone had a pet horse. We wouldn't feel too bad yeah. about using them to carry, like, you know, your stuff around sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but it would be amazing, like, uh, to, to see a theme park based on this. I think the character designs are so cool, and there's so many of them, like, 721 right now, I think, plus Sun and Moon yeah. are coming out just around the corner. Mm-hmm. There's Add a whole bunch more. And so then many. adding the variants, too. Yeah. So that makes it more elaborate, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We could also set up the theme park to be set up like you know how like Disney World has all the different lands within it. We could do different uh, climates like that kind of thing. Like there could be kind of like an ice area and then maybe a fire yeah. area. So almost like a um, I don't know. Was Pokemon Snap set up like that? I'm picturing when I said fire area, I pictured the level where you like there's uh, the Charmanders and the Magmar and the Moltres yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Was every yeah, level kind exactly. of kind of theme? I guess so. There was a river, which was like water types and grass types. Yep. And then I think there was like a safari zone esque kind of one yeah. with you know the cyclos and tauruses and things like that. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I mean, that that could work as well because there's so many different continents on the Pokemon in the Pokemon series. Is it is every generation a different continent? I think it is. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and they base them more around uh, real life actual stuff. places. So 
yeah, Sun and Moon coming out is based off Hawaii, obviously. Yeah. And I think Black and White was New York. Yeah, I think it was or, like, USA very, in the general. United States, essentially, mm-hmm. but like the, the main area was very, very New York esque. Um, this was pointed out to me the other day that that region is called Unova, which supposedly is short mm-hmm. for UN from United and then of A. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I, wow. I, yeah, I, I mean, never actually analyzed it's that. It's not that's, spelled that's with an OF, good. but it still sounds Un- Unova. United yeah. States of a like eh, that's pretty interesting and then I think one of them was based on France recently yeah yeah the and, X and Y was France yeah. and then the first three or four were just different regions of Japan so I don't know yeah. that might be kind of a weird theme park design but then again it might be kind of cool if like you go in and there's like you know several different continents and you have to like ride a boat yeah. in between them or something well alternatively like the theme park could be its own region oh that's true that isn't even shared with the games so then it it, it, maybe would even have its own storyline in a sense that would be really cool so each so each one each game has its own storyline where you know the person you're fighting like team rocket and uh you know there's all these these different bad guys who have these different motivations for being bad guys uh so maybe the theme park would have its entirely own uh, storyline. So I think that's. Which, I don't know if that would lend itself to being a a positive or a negative because that, that's less familiar characters. Maybe but that you can. They could all be visiting. Like you know, maybe it's you. You go through the the traditional Pokemon Heroes quest that you've repeated. You know, so many times since for over the past twenty years. But you go through that same experience again. Like oh, here here's the new starters, that kind of thing. But then quickly you get into like here's Team Rocket, and then maybe you see. Um, some more familiar Pokemon from the older games and throughout your whole visit there, like if you do the whole lap around the whole park, you'll encounter all the different teams, you know, Magma, Aqua, Plasma, all those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you'll encounter all of the different starters as you reach different regions. Potentially. I mean, I think that Pokemon fans are totally accustomed to, okay, here's, I'm doing it again. I'm starting over in a new continent with new starters. Yeah. Like you still get the same experience basically, even if it's, you know, framed differently, you're on a different continent, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So that would be a, a pretty cool option. And then, uh, it'd be nice. I think it'd be fun if there was a themed park where your entire visit was themed. Like you are the character here. Like you are, you know, the player character, every single. Oh yeah. Guest. Like as soon as you walk in, you're given a Pokedex and a choice of three starters. Yeah. And then as, as you make your way through the park, you, you obtain, more stuff mm-hmm. and in a sense kind of level up to you know dude how about this maybe you have to in order to go on a certain ride you have had oh. to have gone on a different ride yes kind of thing so you, you know you have to like in a sense battle that gym uh-huh. to unlock the next gym that's really cool yeah. um have are you familiar with the magic bands that they have at disney yeah for any listeners who's not familiar i, I honestly haven't experienced this firsthand just from being a, a disney fan they they have these wristbands that kind of contain all of your information with on just this one wristband so you don't really have to think about you know where's my wallet where are my keys because your room key is on your wrist in this little like silicone wristband thing your you know payment information is all on there so you can just kind of swipe your wrist this magical like which kind of seems like a thing in the pokemon world like their their technology is kind of whimsical which i really like like the being able to shrink a pokeball like pretty sure that's physically impossible as of right now but (laughs) it's cool that they can just do it like hey yeah it's technology you know it works but if you had all that information stored on you and each individual person has their own uh their own unique like data their own unique file it's like an expansion of um when you play laser tag which i'm a huge fan of you get like your little scorecard like how'd you do like here's your accuracy it's so cool for me to like have my own stats i'm like it, it makes me feel so engrossed in the in that world, even though laser tags like twenty minutes. But yeah. if you do that for a whole theme park, and then you come back and you can bring all of your Pokemon with you again, and you can continue where you left off, that might be a good idea. That's pretty sweet. Oh, totally. No, I think that's that's super rad. It lends itself to a uh, repeat traffic, and you know the urge to go back because you haven't gotten everything yet. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, like any theme park, you constantly are you know updating, adding more too. So if you just keep using it to build up your your theme park XP in a sense. Um, Man, that sounds that's awesome. That's pretty rad. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like a Safari Zone kind of thing in a way. Like you go there <laughs> just to get that unique Pokemon experience, you know, because there's, oh, there's Pokemon yeah, you can't yeah. catch anywhere else. And that'd be cool too if you bring your you you bring your DS or maybe, I think bring your DS to a theme park is usually pretty dangerous because you have to buy a locker then, like you might lose it on a roller coaster and it goes flying. Maybe make it, you know, compatible with Pokemon Go where it yeah. has a park with its own phone app for mm-hmm. that. 
you know, which I don't think is unreasonable at all. I, think I don't totally think so fun. either. In, in, especially in the next like five years, you know, by the time we get this park actually built, um, the technology will be there, I think, where you could yeah. transfer your Pokemon from your DS onto, or, or you know, whatever, your NX, NX or whatever the new uh, yeah. system is. Yeah. You transfer those Pokemon onto your wristband thing or, you know, whatever your device is that you're going to use in the park. And then you can bring, you know, your team of six with you to the park and level them up while you're there and maybe connect, catch some unique Pokemon that are only found in our specific region. And then you can bring them back and transfer them back to your game. And that sounds awesome. I love that idea. Um, what do you think about doing, like, a visual representation of that? Like, does each guest have, like, a little belt, you know, with up to six Pokeballs on it? And they can, like, <laughs> I don't know, tap the Pokeball and you can see what Pokemon is stored in there or something like that? Did you ever uh, did you ever read the Pokemon Adventure like manga series back in my wee days? Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a big collector of that series. I'm a fan, but um, I love the depictions of Pokeballs there because like the top part, um, these comics are in black and white, so it's not the red part; it's like the black part. Um, yeah, but it's like translucent, so you can see like a shrunken, like little baby version of your Pokemon through the Pokeball. Oh, rad. So it'd be cool that's, if. That's- if your Pokeball is just, you know, red and then you like tap it and then it like turns translucent, but not actually, it's like actually a screen, but it shows yeah. you who's in there. So you can, I don't know, do whatever you have to do with that. Yeah, that that yeah, sounds pretty that'd sweet. That'd be pretty cool. Awesome. I'd be down. <laughs> I'd be down too. That's excellent. What about for people who don't play the game? So maybe, you know, you're, you're new to the Pokemon world. Somehow you missed the Pokemon Go thing and, um, mm-hmm. Would maybe you could rent your own Pokemon, like on uh, Pokemon Stadium. You can just rent them, like, yeah. which is kind of a weird, ex- you know, weird idea. Or maybe you just pick a starter and you start from scratch right there in the well, park. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You know, you, you you pick the starter, and then you know, as soon as you walk in to the equivalent of Tall Grass or whatever, and you just catch your stupid little basic insect Pokemon and your Rat Attack equivalent and your Pidgey equivalent. And and if again, it's just like the games where you don't have to know a whole lot at first or you know be super familiar where just kind of you know even if you make it all the way to the end with these like you know basic you know weak pokemon like it, it's you know they inevitably level up because you kind of have to use them anyways yeah um where if, if that's all you want to do you can still make your way all the way through and be fine um maybe not be the best experience for what it was designed around but right. you can do it that sounds awesome. more apathetic parents who are bringing their kids like they can still contribute or participate on a you know, even lesser scale without, you know, literally doing nothing the whole time. This is coming together. I really like the idea of um, even doing the like the level uh, requirements to get on certain rides. I think that's a really interesting idea, and so and it might encourage more um, like interaction between the guests. So let's say you go with like a family and you're really into it, and then you know your parents are not at all, and then you have like a younger cousin who's like really likes it but is really terrible at it so you could maybe trade them each one of your like nice high level pokemon and then everyone can go on the ride or (laughs) you know what i mean that could be kind of cool for sure (laughs) and of course you'd have to like say okay you don't have to follow these rules but maybe this area is suggested for people have reached the certain certain level or this certain you know prestige class of pokemon yeah but if someone wants to ride the ride we're probably not going to say no you know you got to leave the park or something (laughs) yeah totally no no, go back to pallet town (laughs) (laughs) yeah go train for another eight hours and then you can yeah go talk to the professor again (laughs) (laughs) that would be cool to have some walk around characters who are like in their role like there's officer jenny and like nurse nurse joy like yep. old youngster joey, youngster with joey. oh man oh they gotta sell shorts at this park oh <laughs> they're so comfy and easy to wear uh, that would yeah, be really awesome just all, all the weird american translations just yes uh, just bringing all those lines back i'm done that's great <laughs> um and what about uh are there specific sites that you'd like to see replicated i know that we're saying this is like a newer new continent but is there anything mm-hmm. you would like to have a, a version of? Like, for example, the, uh, is it called Lavender Tower? Pokemon Tower? Whatever that's called in Lavender uh, Town? Yeah, yeah. I think it was just Pokemon Tower. Yeah. Remember it. Uh, yeah, it was in Lavender Town. That could be a pretty cool, I mean, it's a weird concept, but you could have, you know, Haunted House kind of thing. But it's basically, oh, yeah, totally. it's like an office building with, like, tombstones everywhere. Like, it's so weird to have a multi-story, you know, cemetery, at least in the <laughs> yeah. United States. Like, I've never seen anything like that. I know... Japan has like rooftop cemeteries sometimes because they're short on, on city you know real estate. But that would be kind of spooky, I think, if you like get off the elevator oh, and then there's just yeah, tombstones. There's just, like there's literally graves in the wall and yeah. graves in each level of floor. But, yeah, I'm. 
<laughs> I, I appreciate that. No, I, yeah, I think having, you know, even if it's not specific from the game, but mm-hmm. I mean, because the games are just repeats of themselves over and over, <laughs> yeah. essentially, uh, with, you know, different flavor each time, mm-hmm. you, know, you can take all the same motifs and, and just, you know, again, re- recreate them for this own unique world. But yeah, so you like have to have, you know, obviously the obvious things like Pokemon centers and Pokemarts and yeah. uh, every game has like, you know, just like the random weird little houses where you just walk in and there's some old dude and he's like, oh, I'll trade you this Pokemon <laughs> if you give me this one. And, yeah. and you, you do that, it, you know, and you, just, you can kind of walk in anywhere and there's just like little homes you just barge in on and nobody seems to care. That is pretty weird, <laughs> but it'd be cool. If, like, uh, every staff member who's working there, so, like, maybe you're just the ride operator or something, but you have some kind of Pokemon that they can't get anywhere else in the park, and, like, you'll trade them whatever they want to trade for it, or maybe you just give it to them. But it'd be cool Uh, if you go around the world and you get these, like, unique experiences. Like, you can trade with, like, any staff member is, like... Because working at this park, the people who work there are probably going to be pretty diehard, and they would probably love the fact that they're in this... They're in an actual, you know, Pokemon region. Like, they work there. So... That'd be so amazing. Like, you know how some people are so into Pokemon Go. And, like, Mm -hmm. I think that this would even get more into the realm of reality. If you're actually in the park, um, and, you know, I don't know. When it has, like, the story and it has uh, the full region set up, it would feel so much more immersive and so much more real and tangible. I think that'd be so amazing for the the people who work there, too. (laughs) Yeah, totally. 